Hello junior IAS officers welcome to race to IAS edition 3 first of all congratulations for clearing race to IAS prelims examination this video is specially dedicated to all the students who are appearing for the race to IAS mains examination on january 11 2020 the mains examination is intended to assess the overall intellectual traits and depth of understanding of candidates rather than merely the range of their information and memory the questions will test a candidate's general awareness of a variety of subjects which has relevance for a career in civil services mains examination will not have any negative marks Let's begin with the exam pattern which is similar for all the student category. The mains exam consists of two papers, paper A general studies, paper B optional subjects. Paper A general studies consists of 8 questions carrying 12.5 marks each which is to be answered in not more than 150 words each. Paper B optional subject in which candidates have to choose one among three subjects geography history science and technology as their optional subject and it contains two types of questions which are short answer questions and long answer questions the seven short answer questions carrying 10 marks each which is to be answered in not more than 150 words and the two long answer questions carrying 15 marks each to be answered in not more than 250 words each paper carries 100 marks each which gives you a total 200 as the maximum marks and you will get 90 minutes each for the paper a and b I hope you all have downloaded the detailed syllabus from the Race to IAS website. If not, don't worry. You can get the same from the description box below. You can also get a brief overview of our each syllabus topics through our Race to IAS mobile application, WhatsApp groups and broadcast. Next, let's discuss about the mains exam answer writing. We all know that mains is a descriptive exam and descriptive answer writing is entirely different from the prelims exam pattern. Answer writing is a science as well as an art. There are people who study but fail to write proper answers. Writing answers is a skill which needs to be developed. So let's find out how to answer a descriptive question. The best way to write effective and precise answers is to practice writing out answers our answers should present the facts and concepts in an interesting way and should never read like a passage from a book it is best to use simple english and avoid decorative language which takes our attention away from the original facts and our opinions about a given topic making a practice of writing out answers is especially useful in managing the time limit set for the exam and to write the best possible answer in the allotted time it not only improves one's style of expression but also one gets used to the time and word limit to start the answer it is very important to understand the question first depending on what the question is whether one is asked to discuss elucidate explain critically appreciate or give reasons for and against the answer should be written accordingly because it is only through the examinee style of answering questions that one can assess his or her originality of thought and analytical ability the question should be read properly in fact the question should be read thoroughly in the first 5 to 10 minutes of the commencement of exam and then one should decide on the questions which are to be answered first 
time should also be given to frame the answer in order to avoid any sort of confusion later on. So the next logical step is to how to write the best answer. The first step is to prepare the framework where one can list all ideas, thoughts and facts and write them down. It is important to adopt an answering style which is natural, original and to the point. Lastly, use your time wisely. Some exams may suggest how much time you should spend in answering each question or even give you a time limit for each question. Having suggestions and limits like these may help you to budget your time. If your exam does not provide a guide for how much time to spend on each question, develop your own time budget towards the beginning of the exam. For example, if the exam period is one hour long and you have to answer three questions in time frame, then you should plan that to spend not more than 20 minutes on each question. Now, take a moment to consider your organization before you start writing your answer. What information should come first, second, third, etc. Take note on these few way steps to fine tune your answers. Tip 1. Be specific and focused. How to write is more important than what you write. Including diagrams, flowcharts are also a great method to approach. When you have nothing, kindly write something regarding the topic because sometimes length of the answers also matter as contents. But remember, it's always recommended to write status rather than a story. Good handwriting is always appreciable. Highlighting always catches eyes easily, so underline the important words. Provide examples. Try to collect maximum information regarding each topic. Do not write an answer stating you have the same problem or one which only answers a question different from the one that was asked. Let us go through few questions. How does the food wastage affect the environment? Also discuss the ways to reduce food wastage. Here, one of the method to approach this question is writing introduction, body and conclusion, where introduction will be revolving around how does food wastage affect the environment, wherein body discusses the ways to reduce food wastage which you can go ahead with a point wise approach and coming to the conclusion write down a combination of both parts of this question next question what do you mean by rainwater harvesting explain different water harvesting techniques how does it help in meeting india's water shortage problems in this one main question you have three sub questions which you can categorize as explanation for rainwater harvesting different water harvesting techniques how india tackles its water shortage problems under these three headings rather than just beating about the bush the best way to answer directly go for point wise approach hope you will take over it further it's always up to you that which method you are comfortable in answering. Finally, it is just not enough to know all the facts and information. But the most important thing to be kept in mind is to write an answer which has a clear and a logical frame, which presents information in a clear and concise manner, which does not contain any irrelevant or piling up of information, which is interesting and able to hold one's attention. Last but not the least, if you have a vision and a positive attitude towards life, then nothing is impossible. So be brave, stay cool and be focused. All the very best to you. Signing off, Anjali Skaria, a civil servant aspirant. Thank you. If you want to join our future ventures, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. 
please press the bell icon on the bottom right to get our latest updates.